to plan a day The mountains are calling you out to play Come on, we'll make you feel right at home Good day, Belle, good day, Belle To see what lies in store for you There's so many things to see and do Summer, winter, spring or fall You're home in the Rockies as it all So gear up ready to plan your day the ideas are brewing you're on your way the fun is waiting outside your door good day Bill. good day Bill. to plan your day the mountains are calling you out to play come on we'll make you feel right at home good day Bill. good day Bill. to see lies in store for you there's so many things to see and do summer winter spring or fall you're home in the rockies as it all so gear up get ready to plan your day the ideas are brewing you're on your way the fun is waiting outside your door good day bill good day bill Hi, and welcome to Good Day Vale, a program dedicated to help you live your best life in the Vale Valley. My name is Cece Zach, and I'm a transplant from the Northeast. Please don't hold that against me, as I'm also the host of this show. Good Day Vale was developed with you in mind, helping you live your best life by learning from locals about how they thrive in the mountains. So this show is designed to be your eyes and ears about all things in the community to enrich your life and help you become more engaged in this community. So what do we have for you today on Good Day Vale? Well, today's topic is a sport that's played by five million Americans of all ages, 70 countries that is striving to be an Olympic sport shortly. We have major celebrity investors such as LeBron James, Tom Brady, Drew Brees, James Bake, Kim Kleisters, and they're also expecting a $40 million participant growth in this sport by 2030. That's 700%. So if you guess what the topic is today, well, it's pickleball. And it's a sport that's taking the country over by storm. There's 10,000 acknowledged places to play in the country. And there's been significant expansion here in the Vale Valley. It's a good day, Vale. Good day, Vale. Good day, Welcome back to Good Evening Vale and the Pickleball episode. As I mentioned, we have two fabulous guests today. We have Mindy Feldman and Melissa McDermott. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. What would be wonderful for our viewers is to understand a little bit about why you've moved to Vale and why you stay in Vale. So, Melissa, why don't we talk, because as we mentioned, uh, you've been in Spain and in China, so you've been outside of the States. So how'd you end up in Vail, and why are you here? Yeah, I moved out of the U.S. Um, right after college. My husband is from Spain, so we met in college and moved to China afterwards. We spent 17 years there. We had five kids, and then we ended up moving to Spain, um, his hometown in the north. We lived there for eight years, and our kids were homeschooled in Spain just because of the system there. We wanted them to have an American education. Um, and as they got to be teenagers, it just really wasn't enough. So that became very clear. Um, my oldest son, Lucas Blanche, got very into skiing and ended up his senior year at VSSA. Um, he does slope style big air skiing, and of course this is a wonderful area for that. Um, he's really into it. You can find him on Instagram. Um, it's his passion. So when we started the discussion about we need something more than homeschool, it's not working out for the teenage years, um, it just made sense for us to move here. We love the mountains, we love physical activity, and just getting outside. So that was why the choice was made to move here. Um, what a great example of you and your family finding a place 
to live your best life. So we'll get into pickleball, but I just love that example about you're all here to, to follow your, your son and his dreams of living his yeah. best life. And uh, it's been very positive, I have to say. It's a super welcoming community and just a wonderful place to live. So uh, That's wonderful to hear. Now, Mindy, uh, you've been here for a while. As mm -hmm. I mentioned, that you've been a proprietor of Radio Shack um, in the Valley. But um, what brought you here, and why are you still here? Radio Shack. Okay. <laughs> we would come and ski winters, and where we were in South Carolina, it was just too hot for me. And so I said, uh, on one trip, my husband was coming out without me, and I said, find us something to do. And there was a card shop right next to a radio shack. Husband and wife had each business. And I said, and he called me and he said, um, well, there's a radio shack for sale. And I said, get it. And so he got it. We never done a retail store, but he was very familiar with electronics and we had it for 30 years. Wow. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Love hearing about people that have been here and have had a business yes. for that long in the Valley. Mm -hmm. um, so let's shift gears a little bit. You know, this is about pickleball. Um, and Melissa, you've been here less than a year, but I hear that you and your family are taking pickleball by, by storm. So tell us about how you got involved. Uh, it's been a little bit over a year, but you know, with a few trips to Spain in there, um, about a year total time. Um, so last January, I believe it was, I was looking for activities for my kids to do, especially my teenage boys who at the time were um, 14 and 18 years old at Battle Mountain High School. Um, and I just somehow discovered drop-in sports, which is just a great concept. And in pickleball, it really makes sense because you are one person, you're looking for an activity that's active in the wintertime, what do you do? You know, drop-in sports are a great way, and pickleball, you just, you go, you drop in, they have rackets for you. Um, we live in Edwards, so originally we went to the Edwards um, field house, and I wasn't able to go the first day, so I took my two teenage boys and I dropped them at the door and said, go in and play. <laughs> It's drop-in pickleball. They said, what's that? I said, I don't know, but it should be fun. Go. And they came home just, you know, lit up and happy because they'd found already a little bit of a community. There were no other teenagers, but there was this nice mix of older adults, like my age and even older, retired, um, who really welcomed them, explained the game, we're chatting on the sidelines and telling them stories about the area and just, you know, it was really a positive experience for both of them. So they wanted to go back and especially my now 15 year old has, has really enjoyed the sport. He's very competitive. He's into racket sports, so he loves it. Oh, what a great story. I, I think what I love that I just heard is two things. One is that you just dropped them off and they, they had the courage to go in and just figure it out but that the community that they found in there was so welcoming. Um, and, you know, sometimes we know that when teenagers come into some type of community, it's not easy for them. Mm -hmm. So that um, definitely proves to me that all ages play this game. It, it just doesn't matter. Um, it, so It was a very nice part of the sport, and I should continue as well, that then my son, the 15-year-old, said, Mom, you need to come too. So let's find other places ah. to play. We ended up at Avon Elementary School in the evenings, and it was just really nice. It's a sport that I can play together with him. You know, like we can participate on the same team or against each other. He's 15, I'm, what, 49 now. You know, he's a guy and I'm a girl, and it, it like, it works. The mix works, the mix of ages and the mix of levels and the mix of, you know, genders. It's, it's really a unique sport in that way. The other thing I like about what you said, too, is that you started indoors. Um, most about what we hear about pickleball today is that it, everyone's doing it outdoors. And so that's why it was so important for us to do the episode now as we go into the winter months and as we see snow on the mountain today. Um, we'll talk a little bit about why it's so important to uh, continue it and, and the fact that we've got so much uh, availability indoors. So. Um, 
Mindy, you've been involved for a while, um, mm -hmm. and I would be remiss in saying that you are um, an extraordinary competitor, um, and you're also a manager of the Avon Rec Center courts as well, um, and you're very involved as an instructor. But really important to me is, why did you get involved? Well, we resisted, my husband and I, because we were tennis players, mm -hmm. and we would see people play the game right next to the tennis courts and they begged us to come try it and we didn't. Uh, <laughs> that was in California and so we were um, in Denver at a rec center during the winter just like this, uh, snow out, wet streets and um, we were working out and we walked past the gym and they were playing pickleball and I said, you know, we can't do anything else. We should just try it. And we did, and hence. Well, so what happened on the first time that you tried oh, it? Tell well, me a little bit well, about the involvement. Oh, okay. Well, you know, it was drop-in. So we were able to go in and play with everyone, and they were actually people that we knew in the community, and we loved it. It was uh, a winter sport indoors, and it was a paddle sport, and we were used to tennis. Since it was quite some time ago, do you, do you find that the community that you dropped in that first time was as welcoming as the community that Melissa referenced here in the Vail Valley? You know, it depends on where you go. Um, I think Avon has done a really good job of enabling people to drop in. And they're, they're nice and they're friendly and they're welcoming. Uh, it, it is an education, though. You know, people don't want to share the court sometimes because they want to play. Mm. So Here I would interject that our experience, and as you said, Avon, yeah. I think is special, or the Vail Valley is special in that the places that I've gone is, have been very welcoming to all levels mm -hmm. as well. Like people who are maybe kind of injured or not moving <laughs> as quickly, you know, you see them out there, they're playing, everybody's welcoming, and mm -hmm. everyone's rotating through. I mean, at least for myself, I didn't get a sense of like, you're new, you know, stay off the courts mm -hmm. or and nothing like that. I felt like it was very welcoming. I do mm -hmm. see what you can, you're saying though, that that could be the yeah. case. Yeah. Yeah. And in my experience, um, it was a little bit challenging because I'm also one person and, you know, for the viewers that don't know much about pickleball, you usually play in a foursome. You can play in a twosome, um, but being a singular individual trying to get in and learn the sport at the same time, I realized pretty early on I had to take lessons because people didn't really want to be teaching me in drop-in because they want to play and be competitive. So um, let's take a short break and we'll come back and talk about the uh, how. Good day, Bill. 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 Welcome back to Good Evening Vale and the Pickleball episode. I have with me Mindy Feldham and Melissa McDermott. Um, and as we've been discussing, pickleball is the rage. And the reason why we're talking about it today is that people know going into the winter season about the availability and how to. Um, but before we get into the specifics of where to play, let's talk a little bit about the basics of the game. Uh, I look at it is that it's racquetball meets ping pong on a tennis court with a wiffle ball-like ball. And so Mindy, tell us a little bit more about the basics of the game. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the court is 44 feet by 20 feet, which is small. And so you have obstacles that are the net and the lines and your opponents. <laughs> and your, the key is to keep the ball going um, until someone scores. Uh, scoring is a little complicated at this time, but they are looking into changing that, which is the best news for me. Even though you probably won't get Alzheimer's if you master the scoring. <laughs> um, yeah, it would be nice if it got a little easier. But uh, there's four people usually. You can play singles, but uh, the majority of the courts are filled with four people, and that's the nice thing about pickleball. Um, you can put about four pickleball courts in one tennis court, so um, 16 people can be playing as opposed to four. So as far as land use and, and things like that, it's just better for communities to put in probably more pickleball courts than tennis courts so more people can enjoy it. But 
really it's just getting the ball over and scoring and it's a blast. One of the things that you just mentioned uh, was around the changing rules around scoring. One of the mm -hmm. things that I have found is that since the sport is evolving and evolving extraordinarily fast by all the statistics I mentioned earlier, I do find that every year that there is some type of change happening. What's the best way for people to keep on top of changing rules? Well, what's nice is if you go to YouTube, if there's new changes such as the drop serve, which was an incredible change for a lot of people because they struggled with just trying to hit the ball out of the air and get it in. Um, you can just go on YouTube and type on New Rules 2023 and usually there's several videos that explain it and show it. Interesting. All right, I need to go back to YouTube because mm -hmm. I definitely need to learn how to improve my serve. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and I am a student of Mindy's. I just haven't had the chance to spend an, a lot of time <laughs> with her yet. That's my goal next spring. Um, Melissa, you're new to the game. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the basics from your perspective and how you have learned. Right. I was just going to say that those are really good points, but if you're new to the sport or you're thinking about just trying it, don't be uh, put off by thinking that it's going to be really complicated. I'm not going to know. It's played with four people, and then there's usually, if you're dropping in, people on the sidelines to help explain things when you're waiting. And you can kind of watch other people play. And there's always someone who knows how to keep score, who can help if you just ask for help. That was my experience. Um, I did play paddle, which is a different sport, so it had to do with a racket. Mm -hmm. So I feel like in that way, I was able to pick it up a little more quickly. Um, but it's pretty, I felt like it was pretty simple as far as where to put the ball, how to, mm -hmm. how to do it, and um, just kind of fast paced, fun easy to pick up and have a good time right away, which is also key. So it's a very accessible sport. I would just stress the accessibility for all levels, all ages. Yes. You know, even if you're having a little back trouble, just get out there and play a couple games. You know, you can always sit on the sidelines and, and watch a bit if you're not feeling well, but um, it's fun right away for everyone. Mm -hmm. So there are a few rules or a few things that you have to learn, um, but it shouldn't put you off trying the sport. It's interesting you say about the accessibility because in preparation for this episode, I noticed that there is, or I watched a CBS episode specific to pickleball, um, and the experts on that show had talked about the fact that it is extremely accessible. All you need is the racket and the ball, which you'll find in most of the venues in the Vale Valley. They'll even let you borrow mm -hmm. them. Um, it's inexpensive, um, as we'll talk briefly just about fees that may be involved. It's very social. You don't have to be um, incredibly fit, um, as I, I think if you want to be good at this sport, you don't have to be incredibly fit like you do with tennis, so yes. to speak. Um, and it's for all ages. I mean, Melissa, you're a great example of what you're doing with your family and the fact that it's for all ages. So. Um, I agree. It, it's, I didn't mean that the basics are scary in any way, shape, or form. It really is an extraordinarily fun game that I actually play in my sleep right now. Um, mm -hmm. so and it's addictive. It and it's addictive, people. right? <laughs> Highly it's, addictive. Yes. Yeah. Uh, a matter of fact, they use the word cultish on that CBS <laughs> uh -huh. uh, ex uh, segment that I just watched the other day. Um, but let's focus a little bit about preventative um, measures. Um, I said it was it's safe, um, but Mindy, you're the expert here. Let's talk a little bit about preventative measures and to avoid injury. Well, I brought two shoes. I'm a visual learner. Um, I was listening to a podcast by Ben Johns, who is the number one player in the world. He's age 23, and he was talking about shoes. And uh, this is a running shoe. And so a good test, if you have a good shoe, is if you can bend it this easy, it is not a good shoe. Ah, um, this is actually a Babylon. Did you know that, Melissa? I did not know that. that. I knew that you had to have a good, sturdy shoe. Well, that's a good test. Right. Um, when you go to bend this, you can't bend it because you have lateral supports here. Uh, this is actually Babolat. Um, I have no connection with them other than I love their shoe. And also Ben Johns happens to wear the Babolat. Okay. Yeah. Um, he suggests that uh, you stick to a tennis shoe um, or a court shoe. But um, if you want to be really 
safe. A tennis shoe, they've been designing shoes for... Sorry, tennis as in the sport of tennis, yes, rather than this just is, a general This is technically shoe. Okay. a tennis shoe. Mm -hmm. And um, how you know usually is that you've got this little thing here. Okay. A little decrease. But, um, and you can get these online. But I have talked to several people that have pulled their Achilles tendon wearing yeah. hiking shoes, yeah. running shoes, and you don't want to wear yeah. So this to me, the shoe would be the most important thing. Uh, one other important safety tip is when you're going back for a high ball of any sort, which happens that, a lot, right? Which happens People a lot. lob all the time. Yes, it's called a lob, and uh, you do not back pedal with your feet. You stop and you turn, um, and you move in the direction of your feet. Um, and then uh, safety for eyes is important. If you're playing competitive or you're playing actually beginner because beginners really don't have control of the ball. So uh, you could get um, an eye injury. So they oh, sell plastic eye gear. Um, wet courts, especially the town of Avon and the town of Vale, I've experienced um, are a trip to an ER. Okay. Yes. That's great information. Even one spot on the court that's wet, it is, you could run into it and, yeah. So, so let's yeah. shift gears uh, real quickly, too, because I want to make sure that we talk about where. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot of options in the Valley. Melissa, where is your favorite place to play right now? Um, the outdoor courts that they just put in at Avon are amazing. They're beautiful, and it's just a spectacular place to play. I've only, Thank you, Mindy. Yes. Yeah. I've only been able to go there a couple of times um, after the summer, but beautiful. Um, other than that, I've only played in the Edwards Rec Center, the field house, which they aren't the best surface because it's a basketball sort of court that they set two pickleball nets on. But it's just a nice place to play in the mornings. It's indoor, and the yearly membership is super, super reasonable. Um, there is a fee for drop-in, but the yearly membership is just like almost nothing. So right. that's nice. And then the Avon um, Elementary School drop-in in the evenings because you get even a better mix of levels, like more upper levels play and, yeah. and a little better mix. So um, Mindy, um, let's just briefly, very briefly, just mention the towns, the other towns that also have pickleball. Maybe if we go from west to east, you mentioned Gypsum has indoor and outdoor as well. Yeah, Gypsum has an excellent, one of the best indoor, outdoor programs that I know of, especially indoor. They have all levels and they start out the first hour, everyone mixed together. And then after that hour, you go into your levels, which is not found in a lot of places. Um, Robin and Jerry Santoro, they're, amb they're regional ambassadors of pickleball with the United States Pickleball Association. They do a incredible, an incredible job there. So from Gypsum, then we go Edwards. We talked about the Edwards Rec Center, um, and that well, is endorsed. Ed Edwards Field House. Field House, thank you. That. Uh, and then yeah. from Edwards, we go into Avon, which we yes. have indoor at the elementary school and then outdoor at the beautiful courts that you help create yeah. um, there as well. Eagle Vale also has um, outdoor courts as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and as you're educating me, Golden Peak and Vail, mm -hmm. as well as, and those are both for outdoor, um, mm -hmm. and the um, indoor courts in Vail are at the Red Sandstone Elementary School as well. Yes, there are four Great. courts there, and um, Jerry does an excellent job with drop-in in the winter. Great. Well, ladies, thank you so much. I'm so grateful mm -hmm. for your time. And this is a new passion of mine, so hopefully you learned a little bit, know where to go, find some information. And this is Cece Zach with Good Evening Vale. Thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you in our next episode to help you learn. Good day, Vail.